Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, your Valiant host, and welcome to the channel. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the best settings to drastically improve your aim in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So, without further ado, let's hop right into it. I can't move on till I let go, I feel so lost, never at all, need to cause I can't move on. Before we dive on into the settings guys, I would really appreciate a like and sub, it really helps boost the YouTube algorithm as well as my ego and don't forget to comment down below how cringy my intro is, so let's do this thing. One thing to note off the gate, this is not mouse and keyboard even though I am using a mouse and keyboard because quite frankly the UI is an absolute dog water and uh, they need to redo this and make it not like a tablet form, so we're going to use mouse and keyboard to navigate through the menus. Small rant over. So, quick settings, if you guys are using quick settings and you plan on doing anything spectacular, feeds, you know, YouTube channels, you know, yada yada, competitive nature, uh, you need to back out of this setting really quick and go away from this, do an in your quick settings. Uh, if you're wanting to casually play, yeah, by all means, but we're not going to go over quick settings. We're going to tear this baby apart. So let's go into our graphic settings first off. Now, not only is this going to be my sensitivities, my settings, I'm also going to toss in a bunch of tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Okay, so very first thing in our graphic settings, I always go full screen borderless because what it does, it auto detects your screen refresh rate as well as your display resolution. I see a lot of people going into full screen exclusive and they try to play around with this. TLDR guys, if your monster only has a 60 hertz refresh rate, you're only going to get 60 frames per second. All right, so just go ahead and swap this to borderless. I'm not sure how tech savvy you guys are, you know, kids nowadays. You know, I'm, I'm getting pretty old. I'm, I'm getting up there. So I have this on borderless. It's just less thing I have to worry about. Next, we're going to go over to quality before we actually get into the controller settings because I believe that this is really fundamental to your aiming as well because the higher FPS you can get, the better your aim sensitivity, the better your magnetism, the better your, your tracking is going to be overall because you have more frames of processing power that the aim assist is going to apply to. So for example, you have 60 frame rates compared to aim assist at 144 frame rates you're gonna have a lot more aim assist with 144 frames because it's able to you know fine tune yada yada so what i'm trying to do in this very beginning session just get you guys the the lowest ram usage possible now i'm using 7000 8000 uh megabytes of ram the lower this is obviously the better to boost your frames per second but if you have a god tier pc which i clearly don't this is like a little budget pc uh so i really have to go through and play around with all these settings TLDR for this section is uh, do not obviously go over your RAM uses and try to keep it around 60 to 70 percent of your overall RAM usage. Now, when it comes to view, your field of view, crank this baby all the way up to 120. This is really, really important because you need to know what's going on on the sidelines. You see a lot of clips of the that I'm going to post a montage on. Um, you barely see a glint of people out of the corners. This is really good for your situational awareness. All right. Next setting that's very, very important is going to be your first and third person camera movement. So you want to lower this all, all the way down to least. What this does is this is your screen shake when you get hit by a riot shoulder wielding a rocket launcher or you get hit with a drill charge through the wall, yada yada. There's a Harrier flying above a VTOL and it's just peppering you in the back. This is really going to minimize your screen shake just so you can land those really juicy crit shots. 
Okay, so hopping on over into the interface section. Now, there's a few things that I really want to point out here. A lot of this is, is just kind of yada yada. There is a center dot option, which I highly recommend. This is really going to help you, you know, with your hit firing, your know, no scoping, your know, whatever. If you're a sniper, this video is intended mostly for snipers, but this can also transition into red guns as well. I feel personally that anyone can pick up a red gun and be decently fine at it, but re what really defines the men from the boys is sniping. And one other option I want to point out, this is just recently added is the color customization option now this is very nice because you can customize your kill feed your customize your ui to make it more appealing you know certain colors stick out a little bit more you know orange for example is a red flag to me or if you're like me you want to on your sniper kill feed you want your name to stand out from the rest you're going to put you know obviously i'm doing red and then everything else is like a white you know super neutral color i'm actually going to start changing my enemy colors to something else kind of works well with red i really don't like the green and cyan colors but uh yeah you can play around with that here okay so let's hop into the controller settings now we are going to go through this with a fine tooth and comb i feel that there's a lot of options a lot of people just really don't understand how they work and i'm going to try my best to explain them to you in this video okay so when it comes to your sensitivities this is 100 what is convenient for you back in the day back in my college days you know why you know snorting Adderall and Chug and Gamma Lab game feel right. I used to play on 2020 sensitivity, but here I am 30 years old and uh, my brain function is a little bit slower guys so as a result i've had to turn my sensitivities down to 18 and 18. i feel that this is really really good especially if you're trick shotting and with such a low time to kill time in modern warfare 2 it feels like you're playing hardcore all the time so when someone is shooting you from the back and you need to quickly correct your aim do like you know snap a 180 quick scope you know whatever you gotta do milliseconds matters guys so if you're running around with an 8 sensitivity and you compare that to a 20 sensitivity there's milliseconds of time there where the person i'm playing on 20 sensitivities will be able to turn around and get their shot off a lot quicker than the 8 sensitivity person now that's not to say that it's going to put you in any competitive, you know, whatever disadvantage. This is merely preference. But if you can play at a higher sensitivity, then definitely do so. Get some practice in. You may find out that it's not as difficult as it seems to be as long as you go through and fine tune all of your scope aiming. So, you know, your 2x, your 3x, your 4x. As long as you adjust those sensitivity multipliers, you're really not going to notice the sensitivity, you know, whatsoever. Aim assist type. Now there is a lot of debate of which one is better. Now I can tell you from experience, why would you even listen to me anyway? Who am I? Who is Horcrux? Well, back in the college days, I used to be the head of the East Sniping Division of STDX, which is set to destroy, which is now known as Lazarus Gaming. We used to do scrims back in Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2 against Soar, Energy, Phase, you name it. We did it. We had a good time with the guys. I didn't do anything competitive because I have a lot of college going on, and eventually they did drop me from the team because I had college and school and work going on i just couldn't keep up with both but yeah i do have quite a lot of experience in first person shooters even though you go back and look at my channel there's nothing but mmo content trust me guys mmo content is not my forte it's just something i do to you know take the edge off now when it comes to default precision focusing and black ops focusing um, as it says is for newer players um, i really don't like focusing all too much um, it does have too strong of an aim like slowdown. I, I feel like the, the slowdown cone is too much around your targets, but um, the two main aim assist types is going to be precision as well as black ops. Now, from what I've heard, black ops does give you um, a little bit more stickiness outside like, of, of your targets, if, if that makes sense. Now, the reason I use precision is because it feels really really sticky when you hover directly over your target not a little bit before you get to your target when you are dead center on your target it pretty much stops your reticle so it doesn't matter if you have a really high aim assist like when you're sweeping you're swiping you're flicking or whatever it literally stops on their character model if you're in precision like it's absolutely nutty whereas if you go with black ops it does stop to an extent, but it doesn't stop necessarily where you want it to stop. It stops a little too early in my opinion. So that's why I go with precision. If you're a flicker, go with precision. If you are into tracking, I would probably go with black ops. Okay, so when it comes to the aim response curve type, now just don't go as standard. So there's two settings here you may notice from Fortnite. There, there's linear and dynamic. So linear, in my opinion, is made for people who play at lower sensitivities because if you move your controller stick just a little bit, it's actually going to produce a 
great a much greater movement than would be dynamic dynamic is made for like super fine tuning adjustments which in my opinion if you're going to be sniping this is what you want to roll with okay so the next topic up for debate here is ads sensitivity transition timing so essentially what this option means is as the moment you decide to zoom in on your target what sensitivity multiplier is it pulling from so i go with gradual because i play at such a high i play at such a super high just raw sensitivity and then i have a super low like fine tuning sensitivity so for example if i'm playing on 20 sensitivity i zoom in when i'm going back and forth with my reticle it feels like i'm on like a one or two just so i can find aim now um when you are I guess there's two different play styles. You can either drag scope, and this is sniping perspective, or you can just zoom in you know, on the person and point click. There's point click and there's drag scoping. I find myself doing drag scoping quite a bit. That's where you have, you zoom in and you just kind of flick your shots over to your target. Now, if you are more of a point and click person, um, you'll want to go with instant. If you're close up, I feel that gradual, you know, is really good. If you're using marksman rifles, for example, I feel that gradual is probably a lot better of an ADS sensitivity or a transition timing. But if you're more, you know, hard scoping, you know, landing Larry's, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, bigger map, I would probably go with an instant. But uh, overall, I think gradual is just, just better. Okay, so the next point I want to talk about is automatic sprint. Let me tell you guys about automatic sprint while it seems like it should be the best on paper wow it, it's an extra click i don't have to do you can either do automatic sprint or automatic tactical sprint what happens is when you are moving forward literally at all it will initiate your sprint and what will happen is if you try to no scope you know how you stop no scope you know your your sprint to shooting speed you know whatever that uh, that fine tuning attachment is uh, on your snipers um, it actually does not allow you to, if you move just a tad bit forward, it tries to make you run again. So you have to do that whole pull down animation for your sniper just to get the shot off. So it's a safer bet in those close quarter encounters to have automatic sprint turned off. And some notes about your inputs on your dead zones over here in the advanced tab. This is something you need to dial in on your controller. These are my presets. Um, I'm using an Elite 2 series controller. I actually have, you know, the four paddles on the back. It, it's probably one of the best controllers I've ever used, actually. But here's my dead zone inputs. You want to take a look at that. Again, this is going to be specific to you and how your controller functions. Um, also, when it comes to your sprinting, you know, like we said, have the auto move forward turned off because this is going to keep you in a W key motion the entire time. You're not going to be able to get those quick no scopes off when you need to. Um, another thing to note is going to be the automatic airborne mantle. You want this at partial because otherwise when you try to jump shot over cover, it's going to make you hurdle it and you're going to get your head taken clean off real quick. All right, guys, and just as a little extra, I want to show you my two loadouts that I typically rock um, when I'm playing Modern Warfare and by myself or with friends. So the very first loadout is going to be with the SPX-80. So um, we're going to kind of ignore everything else. So essentially on your perk package, I always go with Battle Harden because when you get up with flashes, it does interrupt your kill feed quite substantially. So um, if I'm going to have my feed ruined by a flash grenade or if I just die to a rock, I'd rather just die to the rocket. Now, I do rock an overkill class. This is my swap class. But at the time of making this video, I actually have a riot shield on. A riot shield is actually very, very effective into blocking incoming damage from your left, right, your back. This will save you a lot, especially the time to kill is so low in Modern Warfare. Even this blocks a couple bullets from hitting you. Like, this is going to set up a lot of potential for when you're going on, you know, whatever you're doing. You can put this on any class. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sniper, but I think a riot shield on your back is uh, kind of broken and overpowered, in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to bonus perks, always going with focus because you want to have the, the least amount of flinch as possible. And 100% go with quick fix because this is immediately starts health regeneration, you know, from Fortnite, how it has the siphoning, you know, effects or whatever. This is essentially the same thing. As soon as you kill someone, it immediately triggers health regeneration and which is very, very important for you, you know, to keep on, keep on. And I have to lay down, heal, lay down, heal, lay down, heal. It's a very passive play style, which I'm just not a big fan of. So let's top over into the spx uh, gunsmith so i'm gonna show you what i'm rocking now um i'm actually rocking the forge tech delta 4 now the reason i'm running this i have a theory that certain scopes give you certain degrees of aim assist and all the scopes that I, scopes that i've used i feel that the forge tech delta 4 has the highest aim assist 
I don't really know if that's for sure. If anyone knows, let me know down in the comments. This is just a theory at this point, but I know I absolutely pop off when I had this scope active. Not only does it, you know, look kind of cool, you can add skins. I don't know if you, a lot of you guys know, you can actually add, uh, add some skins to your to your fine tuning. Anyway, I'm sure you guys know, maybe not know, a, a lot of like little buffs that you kind of toss into the game periodically that they don't necessarily tell you. It actually does increase your ADS uh, speed as well. So uh, scope is entirely up to you, but I do have a funny suspicion that certain scopes have different degrees of aim assist. Now I'm going with uh, the 22.5 uh, elevated barrel uh, on your tunings, you know, aim walking speed, recoil steady, and this, this is kind of trash, doesn't really matter. You want your ADS speeds. Now you, you may ask yourself like, okay, you know, why are you going with this one? Well, first of all, it gives you your ADS speeds and then the rest of them kind of does give you ADS speeds like the 16 inch, but it does increase your damage range fall off. So um, this is what I found to give me less hit markers, you know, more often is the elevate 11. Um, Schlager Pro, the reason I'm going with this laser is because it doesn't actually show a green or red light the entire time. Uh, it's a huge indicator, it's going to get you killed more often than not when you're, you know, looking down a lane. And so I uh, go with the laser that doesn't show a laser unless I'm looking through it, no one else can see it but me. Um, next, uh, with your stock, uh, you're going with a PVZ 890 tax stock. And um, I'm not sure why this isn't fine tuned. This, oh, look at this. Uh, so I always go with. Um, the, the aim walking speed really doesn't matter. I do like to strafe around corners quite a bit. Um, that's why I like marksman rifles because they seem to have a higher strafe value as well. So definitely go with aim down, aim down sight speeds and aim walking speed in my opinion on this one. Then we got the Schlager match grip. Schlager love saying that again, fine tune it to sprint to fire speed as well as ADS speed. And if you guys are unfamiliar how to unlock weapon tuning, essentially you just have to max a weapon out and then uh, that's it. And of course, customize, you know, whatever, camo, this is the best camo in the game, this little, this little rainbow guy. In my opinion, it's pretty dope, put on your rifle, it's pretty cool. Now, a loadout number two is with a marksman rifle, this is the SAB-50, I think this is the best marksman rifle in the game because I get the least amount of hit markers with this. Um, I actually get some one-shot kills, which I definitely don't deserve with this, and uh, I think it's all due to the attachments. Again, you have Forge Sack Delta. Um, site here I, I, again i think it has a higher emesis value than others going with a 12.5 inch carbon barrel now you now you can use the 18.5 i hopped on my buddy's account i really don't like this one all too much and you would think that the 18.5 inch bryson lr factory would give you less hit markers because it has a slightly increase in damage but it it just doesn't like these two feel literally exactly the same and then you got the 12.5 inch is actually going to increase your ads speeds which is very important on the marksman rifle as long as you get that first shot you're golden same thing schlager peck box laser um it increases ads speed but doesn't actually show the laser so, so people can you know track you around corners we got the assault 60 stock again you can either go with aim walking speeds or aiming idle speeds with your ads time fine tuning and then again we have the schlager match grip sprint to fire speed aim down sides so I think that's really all you need when it comes to attachments for your gun. You can you, you add ammunition and you know things like that. I know on the signal, if you add explosive rounds, it actually decreases your damage and you get a lot more hit markers. You know, just little things like that. Tactical flash, throwing knife, you know, just whatever. Tactical insert for your field upgrades entirely up to you. You know, the way you play your play style, buzz, you know, whatever. You're gonna be trolling. You can toss out a decoy for all I care. Little, little decoy guys. By the way, you can kill people with those decoys. If you toss it underneath them and then it inflates, it actually kills them. It's pretty funny. So, with all that being said, guys, I hope you found a little bit of information in this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. This has been Horcrux. Don't forget to like and sub, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.